everyone and welcome back to another beautiful day here in Bucharest. We have plans today to find as many restaurants as we can that sell beer and meat because that's definitely the thing to do while you're in Eastern Europe. The place we wanted to visit was a 50 minute subway and tram ride away. So first we headed for the metro and this is where we had our first subway experience in Bucharest. Yeah, it's cool, eh? See? Wow, it's huge! So nice! It was really cool riding the subway in the city. It had no carriages so you could see all the way to the end. And I especially liked the metro station for some reason. It's not modern at all, but I felt as though I stood back in time just by standing there. We then caught the tram to our final destination, and this was also an experience. The trams are super retro and have heaters lining the windows, so you never have to feel the cold. It was awesome. Once we found the restaurant, it happened to be located down a small road near a university, filled with local markets selling all sorts of traditional Romanian foods. The lady at the food store did not speak any English, but we managed by pointing and saying yes to everything. Mm -hmm. da, da, yes. Okay. Did you get saramala? Oh, oh. oh okay. <laughs> All the food listed on her menu was slow cooking away in the large pots behind her and there were so many different Romanian foods to choose from that we just didn't know what to order. Okay, so... We finally made it! Yeah, we finally made it. But we don't really exactly know what we ordered, but it seems really, really traditional here. And it turned out to be at a local market too, which was quite surprising. So, we ordered... This is called Pastrama Haidusisa um, and something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't say the rest of the yeah, name of yeah. me. Smelled and delish. This is Sarmale, which we tried before. Have we? Um, but we didn't go to a traditional place. So this is cabbage rolls with polenta and it's got minced pork inside and some oh, looks damn. like some veggies looks as well. Good. So this is really authentic. Eat that let's, yes, eat. let's eat. <laughs> well the polenta looks so creamy. It's got like a like a thick kind of porridge consistency. Is that cabbage on top? And then she tried uh, really onions. Good. Wow. <laughs> this food's really delicious. Wow. We're getting all the good meals now, huh? Not only is it smooth, but it has a good chewy bite to it. Wow. I think this is pork. Definitely mm. pork. Okay, so the pork looks really, really good. Here we go. First bite. Ooh, girl, it's a mouthful. <laughs> mm. How's that? Well, you can really taste the sourness of the cabbage. Oh, this is the best meal ever. Look at that. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to try it. <laughs> God damn. So the markets here are really cool. They have everything ranging from like fresh fruits, veggies, sweets, cakes, cured meats, and there's even a couple of restaurants we saw in there. So compared to open markets, it was a lot smaller, but it's definitely a lot more quieter and local here. So you get more of a Romanian village feel here. So crazy right now we are outside the Arc de Triumph in Bucharest. They have their own Arc de Triumph here because as I mentioned in my previous videos Bucharest is known for being the little Paris of the East and this is one of the reasons why. So it's really crazy there's so much traffic here like I don't know if you can hear me but it's so noisy with all the cars zooming by as you can see. And yeah it's definitely not as big as the one in Paris but I think it's a lot bigger than what I expected. So not that far of a walk away from the Arc de Triumph is this really nice park actually and we looked at it on Google Maps, it actually looks quite big. So if you're in the area this is a nice place to go seeing as the Arc de Triumph is not directly in the centre of Bucharest. You can also pay your respects to Michael Jackson at the park if you're a fancy. <laughs> We got some local Romanian beers at Mega Image, which is like a supermarket here. So Carlos got a Pilsner beer and I got Timmy Sorena, which is like a local Romanian brand and it's non-pasteurized. 
so we're gonna give them the big taste test. <laughs> so this is the Timmy Sorena beer. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's really tasty, it's quite different. Because I usually drink Pilsner beers, so it's kind of got more of a creamy flavor to it. And then this is the Pilsner beer. Not that we are any yeah, type not. of connoisseurs <laughs> of beers, okay? We're just like just drinking Disclaimer, beer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm, this one's nice. It's a bit more bitter than the non-pasteurized beer. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> we couldn't resist getting Luca again. I swear this is the third time I've filmed this. I think they sprinkle crack on top of those little, um, little so Luca things. This is like a kind of hot dog pastry. It's called Kovri. Kovri Luca. Kovri Luca. And it's got See? pastry, kind of bread, and poppy seeds on top. So, yeah. Mm. Oh. Yum. The pastry is nice and crispy. You can see it's um, hot. It comes straight out of the oven. Like, yep. always. Mm -hmm. This place is on point. And those are the two brothers who found it in the place, the Luca brothers. We stumbled across this local pub in the area for some beers and meat. We were surprised to find how packed it was inside. So of course it was way too loud for me to record. So we ordered again something we couldn't quite understand by just pointing at random things on the menu and we were good to go. Luckily the beer menu was easy and thanks to Google Translate we somewhat knew what we had ordered but we were still surprised when the food arrived. We ended up with a massive plate of different types of sausage, traditional meat, gherkins, mustard, and not to forget the amount of chips that were served with this. We poured olive oil on top of the meal and the whole plate was just glistening in the light. The sausages tasted delicious, chewy and greasy. I really enjoyed the variety of different Romanian sausages. Even this random one with lots of little tiny sausages served in a kind of kebab stick style. The meat was so tender, juicy and bouncy and the mustard and gherkins gave the meats a hint of bitter sourness. Having the chips on the side was a great idea to soak up all of the sausage's greasy oils. We both ordered a Pilsner beer to wash down all of the meaty goodness. It had a nice light taste, perfectly complementing all of the meat and sausages we had just devoured. This pub was really quite lively. It was filled with people of all age groups, young and old, families and friends. The ambience here really made the place so enjoyable, we couldn't have asked for a better way to end our night. If you enjoyed watching this video, you know what to do, and don't forget to click on my playlist above to continue watching. Oh no, I gave my heart away.